Chapter 19 Is that your traffic stopping shirt? A.J. asked when he and Eve were sitting on the park bench lacing up their rollerblades. You don't like my shirt? Eve asked, pulling the fluorescent orange shirt out from her body. I'm not getting close to you. They could land airplanes on that thing. Oh, yeah? You better be nice to me, or else... or else... Or else what? Or else. His gaze slipped over to her skeptically. Ooh, I'm scared. Well, you should be. She pulled one rollerblade out of her pack and bent to put it on. Orange? He asked, stopping his own lacing efforts incredulously. What's the matter with orange? You have shoelaces that match your shirt. That's a problem? My shoelaces don't even match each other. That doesn't surprise me, she said, lacing quickly. Clothes aren't exactly your top priority. Not high enough to get shoelaces on my rollerblades to match my outfit, they're not. She set about tying the second one. Yeah, you're doing good if your pants match the rest of your outfit. Outfit? Hmm, I never thought about this being an outfit. He put on his sunglasses and stood from the bench, barely catching his balance. Flailing his arms, he finally stopped. He struck a half pose. AJ's ensemble today is a fetching pair of baggy jeans with frays in all the right places. Now, not machine-made frays, mind you, but real, honest to goodness, he's worn these things a million times, frays. Coupled with a trendy yet casual jersey from the University of North Carolina. He held out his hands as if to show off his clothes, but his skate slipped again and he almost went down as he turned his shoulders to model his shirt. Oh, and don't forget the ever-popular yet so seldom-worn right accessory, the ever-present backward baseball cap, Eve said with amusement as she stood from the bench and checked her own balance. Of course, what outfit would be complete without it, he asked, holding his balance by the throat. She looked down at herself. Aw, man. What's the matter? he asked in instant concern. I forgot mine. Her gaze jumped to him as she skated the two steps to his side. I guess I'll just have to take yours. With that, she whipped his hat off his head and took off down the sidewalk. Hey, hey, he yelled, barely keeping his balance as he tried to turn, lunge for the hat, and catch her at the same time. You want it? she asked, skating backward tauntingly. You're going to have to come get it. She slipped it onto her head, pulling her hair back and down with it as she put it on backward. Well, then slow down, he said, obviously trying to get his skating legs under him. What's the matter? This can't be any harder than moguls, and you're an expert at those. I've never actually done this before, though, he said. You haven't roller skated? When I was seven. She shrugged, liking how out of control he looked. It's just like riding a bike. He managed to stay upright, although he didn't look like a natural as he followed her down the sidewalk. You should have warned me. About what? About the fact that I was stupid enough to ask a world-class skater out to rollerblade. Ah, poor AJ. Finally met his match. Just wait until I get you on some water skis. Then we'll see who's met their match. Slowing down a fraction, she closed some of the distance between them. It would help if you'd pick up your other leg. I am. No, up. This isn't up. She demonstrated his contrived form of skating. Up, like this? He did as instructed. However, he jerked his body to get it done, which threw him off balance. Ah! In the next second, he face-planted in the grass. Laughing, she clapped as she switched directions and skated back to him. Well, that was graceful. Hey, did I say I was good at this? He asked, rolling over and reaching up for her hand. If you did, you were lying. She reached down and pulled him to his unsteady feet. In an instant, her comprehension pulled in the fact that he was only inches away, closer than he had been since they'd left New Mexico. His smile slipped through her heart even as he held onto her for balance. Nice hat, he said, gazing up at it. I thought so. She reached up and touched it. 
It wasn't that she thought about it before that exact moment, but she simply couldn't take the distance between them any longer. Leaning just far enough so that she could find his lips, she brushed across them. However, one touch only brought a need for more. Suddenly, all she wanted was to get closer to him, and for one second too long, that desire took over the laws of physics as she pressed into him. By the time her brain kicked in to warn her, it was too late. Ah! she yelped, fighting to keep her balance even as they went down. In the next second, they were lying on the grass next to the sidewalk. Embarrassment, humiliation, mortification, they should have been yanking her up off the trail, off of him. But none of them were anywhere to be seen. In fact, who happened by to see them? She really didn't care. She wanted to shout to the world how she felt, and this was as good of a way to do that as any. Gently, she ran a hand over the spikes of blonde-toned hair. That was graceful, he said as one of his arms came around her back. You thought so? she asked with no hint of anything other than intensity. How about this? No other move she had ever made with a guy had been so bold as she draped herself right over his body, making it nearly impossible for him to even move. Her skate clunked on the concrete as she meshed her lips with his. A moment, another, until she was spinning on the feeling of his lips on hers, his body cradled in the protection of hers, his hand sliding up and down her back in perfect rhythm to the day around them. When she pulled back and looked at him, what she could see of his face held pure disbelief. I think we should go skating more often, he said. Oh yeah? Why's that? It's kind of fun watching an expert at work. Watch and learn, she said as she pressed her lips to his again. AJ could have stayed right there the rest of the day and not had any complaints. However, his senses finally kicked in when he heard the jogger's footfalls on the sidewalk. Okay, he said, pushing up from the ground as he pushed her off of him. Break's over. Ah, she pouted. I was enjoying the break. Yeah, well, if you're really lucky, I might just go down for good next time. She laughed as she rolled away from him. Want some help? No, he said as he struggled to his feet. I think I'm perfectly capable of crashing on my own. Chicken? Casually, she dusted off her pants when she was back on her skates. Smart, he said, catching his balance. They call it smart. She laughed. Then, here, how about I teach you to skate? His gaze slid across her skeptically. Do I dare trust you? Do you have a choice? Laughing, he put his hand in hers and turned his skates up the sidewalk with her. It took several strides, but his body finally caught on to the cadence of hers, and his strides lengthened. So, how'd the show go? Oh, geez. Let's put it this way. For a while there, I thought I was going to have to call you to come model. Me? His skate slipped, but he caught it. You couldn't be that desperate. You didn't see me yesterday. She skated with no hesitation. I hated to miss the party. How are Gabe and Ashley? Glad they didn't come with us, I think. Questioningly, she looked at him. Ashley has this thing about blood. Ah, Eve said with complete understanding. I used to know someone like that. Oh, who would that be? I think you know her, she said. She's this really cool person. Skates like a dream. Skis like a, well, we won't talk about that. Likes to shop and take people's heads off while they're dancing? Oh, so you know her. He couldn't have squelched the smile had he wanted to. Yeah, I think we've met. It was after seven when they made it back to Eve's place, pizza and movie in hand. She pulled a piece out for him as he worked with the player. Have you ever noticed how much better pizza tastes when you aren't sitting at a table? She asked as she took a bite of his and then handed it to him when he sat down next to the chair. Hey, you ate mine. Sorry, she said. I was hungry. Good thing I didn't wear you out too bad or I might not get anything. I have a feeling that would never happen, 
she said, sliding over so that she could lean against the same footrest as he was using. I know how you are with food. Yeah, the same way I used to be with hats, until somebody stole mine. I look better in it than you do, she said as she reached up and ran her hand over the black cap. That wouldn't be hard. Shh, the movie's starting. Midway through the movie, Eve had given up and laid down on the floor using AJ's leg for a pillow. Where it flowed out from under the cap, her hair streamed over the phrase in his jeans, and his heart missed a beat every time he noticed it. Jeff was right. All the beauty that she possessed was nothing compared with the woman that she was inside. Without asking permission, his hand laid on the bright orange sleeve and ran itself down the length of her arm, just past her elbow, and then back. Just touching her like this made the rest of his senses stand up and take notice. After several minutes, he felt her relax, and then her shoulders dropped for the last time. He didn't have to look to know she was asleep. She'd had a hard week. He couldn't blame her for being exhausted. He thought about her skating like she was born on rollerblades, and he smiled. She seemed to have no qualms whatsoever in trying something new, and, more astounding, no hesitation in being with him. It was a feeling he could get used to. At that moment, his gaze slid from her to the television, and then it snagged on the crystal rose looking down at them from the mantel. Funny, he didn't remember it looking quite so ominous the last time he was here. His hand stopped its exploration of her arm. You know, this wasn't my idea, he said under his breath to the rose. I didn't know this was going to happen. Look at her, AJ. She trusts you, the rose said in the back of his head. And what have you done? You've lied to her over and over again. Just being with her like this is a lie. I didn't lie. I just haven't told her everything. Haven't? Like you ever intended to. Face it, you lied and you know it. Look at her. She thinks you're this goody-goody white knight riding in to rescue everybody. What a joke. That's why you don't want to tell her the truth. She might see what you really are. What? he asked fearfully. A coward. That's what. A coward who had the chance to save the man she really loved. And what did you do? You let him die. I did my best. Well, your best wasn't good enough, was it? Dustin's the one who should be with her right now. Not you. You don't deserve her. You don't deserve her trust or her love. And you know it, too. That's why you won't tell her. I will, he said pleadingly. I will tell her. Yeah, right. Once a coward, always a coward. Besides, what makes you think she won't hate you forever if you do? Because she believes in me now. No, she believes in who she thinks you are. But you haven't had the guts to show her who you really are, have you? No. Look at you, you coward. You won't even tell her you love her because you're afraid of what she would say. You're afraid she'd laugh in your face. And you know what? She probably would. AJ tore his gaze from the rose and it fell to her. The sight burned his lungs. As much as he wanted to bury that voice, run a sieve through it and drop it off a cliff, he knew it was right. Dustin should be here, camped out in the living room floor, holding his wife. Not him, some poor imposter who was an inferior substitute at best, a bald-faced liar at worst. He didn't want to wake her up, but he had to get away before the lies between them pulled her down with him. Carefully, he moved one leg that instantly screamed in pain, his chest filled with sticky cotton, clinging to every airspace available when she moaned in protest. Shh he said, bending over her and willing her to go back to sleep. However, she rolled over to her back when her head was on the floor and looked up at him blankly. Where are you going? Home, he whispered. In confusion, she turned her head and looked at the television. The movie's not even over yet. Yeah, but you need some sleep. Blearily, she smiled. I was. I noticed. His smile was weaker than hers as he brushed the hair back from her face. Get some rest. I'll call you. Promise? Yeah, 
I promise, he said, not meaning a single word. Gently he bent and brushed his lips on hers, knowing it was goodbye, feeling that goodbye slice him in two. Then, knowing he had no other choice, he pulled back, stood, and let himself out, not trusting even a backward glance. Just after two, Eve awoke again, and for a moment she thought his departure was only a dream. However, she could feel the emptiness of the apartment around her. Slowly, she pushed herself upright, stood, and walked to the television that was still flashing incoherent pictures. With a sleep-heavy hand, she snapped it off, and the little nightlight on the mantel snapped on in the darkness. Solemn peace slipped through her as she gazed at the rose. You know I never planned on this, she said, running a gentle finger over the iridescent colors. But I can't deny it any more. I love him, Dustin. I think I have for a long time. I know he's not you, and he never will be. But with him, I think I can finally move on. Life is yours to live, Eve. Don't miss this chance, living in the past with me. This moment is as precious as that one we had. Her gaze dropped to the darkness at her feet. I won't forget you. Hey, it's not goodbye, Dustin said softly. It's never goodbye. Only until I see you again, remember? The warmth of the smile spread through her. I love you, you know that? I know. That's why I have to let you go. You deserve to live. With A.J.? With whoever you choose. I choose A.J. Then he's one lucky guy. The whole world felt so heavy to A.J. Without her, there was a denseness that hadn't been there before. It hurt to simply put his feet on the floor the next morning, and the ache had nothing to do with yesterday's skating excursion. At the mirror, he ran a hand over the scratchy stubble covering his jawline. No one had to tell him he looked like a mess. He was, and he knew it. Thing was, at the moment, he couldn't have cared less. Well, after Saturday, I would have thought you'd look like the devil, Mary Jo said when Eve breezed into the room on her way to her drawing table Monday morning. It's a wonderful day, don't you think? Eve asked, swinging her briefcase to the table. Mary Jo looked at her skeptically. A wonderful day? Okay, who are you and what have you done with a real Eve? You know her, the one who usually looks like death barely warmed over. She decided to come back to the land of the living. By choice? Eve smiled throughout her whole spirit. You always have a choice. AJ tried not to think about her. In the garage, he turned the music up to the point that hearing loss was more than a possibility. The drumsticks reverberated through the nerves in his hands as he pounded on the drums in front of him. But no matter how hard he beat, she was right there every time he closed his eyes. In stone-faced denial, he switched over to the hardest heavy metal CD he owned and poured himself into the beat. All through supper, Eve sat watching the phone, willing it to ring. She couldn't wait to talk to him, to tell him about her upcoming promotion to head her own department, girls' footwear and leisure wear. There was something appropriate about it, she thought with satisfaction. She couldn't have been more than seven or eight when she first started dreaming of being the one who decided what went on those racks. Now, here she was, living her dream in more ways than she could ever have imagined. You're not going out tonight? A.J.'s mom asked when he flopped on the couch to watch television with her on Wednesday night. Not planning on it, why? You just haven't been here much lately, and now I can't get you to leave. I figured you'd be itching to get out of here, go out on one of your adventures. He tried to settle in on the couch. Nope, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. No L.A.? Nope, no more L.A.'s. I've learned my limitations. Concern descended across her features. Limitations? I've never heard you use that word before. Well, there's a first time for everything. When Jeff called on Friday night, begging for a fourth hand, A.J. wasn't about to give in to the overwhelming temptation to throw Rational out the window and just go. 
No, for her sake, he wasn't going there again. She deserved better, and he was determined that she would have it. I can't, he said, rushing through the words. I've got plans. Oh, Jeff said, and A.J. knew what Jeff thought those plans were. Well, have fun. Yeah, I will. The phone dropped back to the cradle, and A.J. looked at it with a hard, cold stare. With a yank, he pulled it up to his ear and dialed the number. Mel, hey, you got plans tonight? Well, you do now. By Friday evening when Eve got home, she knew something was drastically wrong. He hadn't called, and it had been more than five days, although it felt more like five lifetimes. The phone book was pointless, information wasn't any better. Finally, her heart needed to know that he was all right, more than her mind needed to not feel like an idiot. Standing by the door down the hall, she took a deep breath and reached up and knocked on it. Her gaze traced back to the steps, and again she prayed he was all right. Quickly, she knocked again. Yes? The half-inch of face lodged between the door, the frame, and the chain asked uncertainly. Eve cleared her throat. Hi, um, you probably don't remember me, but I live just down the hall. Um, I'm the one AJ left that box with that time. Yes? Well, I just wanted to know if you've heard anything about him. I'm a little worried. About AJ? The face said. Why? Well, he hasn't called me. He told me he would, but he hasn't. I don't have his number, and I just wanted to make sure that that he was okay and everything. Doubt was all Eve could see. He lives with my mom. I know, but I don't know her name, and he's not listed in the phone book. Um, I just remember that he was your brother, and I thought maybe you might know something. She realized this conversation was headed nowhere. That's okay, I just thought... The door slammed closed, and her heart slammed with it. Then she heard the chain, and hope flooded through her when the door opened. Please, come in, Chelsea said softly, and Eve's heart went out to her. A young girl out on her own for the first time. Eve knew what that was like. Thanks, she said as she ducked into the apartment. When the door closed, Eve pulled her hair back from her eyes and faced Chelsea. The resemblance to A.J. threatened to rip her in two. Um, I know you probably think I've lost my mind, and maybe I have, but A.J. was here on Sunday, and he said he'd call. At least, I think he said he'd call. But he hasn't, and I was wondering if something happened to him or something. Chelsea's petite, soft features fell with concern. Well, I haven't talked to him in a while. I talked to Mom mostly, but she never said anything. Oh, well, I'm sure everything's all right. I just... I don't have his number, so I couldn't call and ask for myself. Oh, I can give it to you. Chelsea grabbed a piece of paper from the cabinet and scrawled the number on it. Then, just before she handed it to Eve, she stopped and surveyed her seriously. You aren't the one he went skiing with, are you? Yeah, Eve said and just the memory brought a half-smile to her face. I am. Oh, Chelsea said knowingly. Then she smiled. Then I know he wouldn't mind. She handed the number over to Eve, whose gaze snagged on a picture on the wall just beyond Chelsea. It was of Chelsea and AJ, younger by about ten years. Until that moment, Eve hadn't realized the depths to which she had missed that face. AJ is really a great guy. Chelsea said, hinting very carefully. He seems all run out and do whatever you want, but sometimes he can be so sweet, he'll blow you away. Yeah, Eve said, staring at the picture, wondering why he hadn't called, and knowing exactly what Chelsea was talking about. One more moment, and she wished she could take that picture with her. Well, I'd better get going. Thanks for the number. Any time, Chelsea said as she made their way to the door. Oh, and stop by and talk sometime. I have a feeling we won't just be neighbors forever. Although Eve said thanks, she wondered at that statement. Five days ago, she had hoped that was exactly where this was going. Today, she was far less sure. Number in hand, she went back to her apartment and slipped inside. She wouldn't let him slip away quite so easily. Isn't this great? A.J. asked, tipping his third bottle of beer up at their table when Melody's two friends had left with other guys to go dance. 
Yeah, great, Melody said, obviously not thrilled. You know, it's not that I don't like going out with you or anything, but what's up anyway? You haven't called me in, like, weeks, and now all of a sudden you have this burning desire to go out partying. AJ looked at her, his eyes already blurring from the alcohol. I'm sorry, Mel, I should have called. It's just, I've just been busy with other things. Other things? Uh Uh-huh. And this wouldn't have anything to do with that girl we saw here that night, would it? Me and a girl? He tipped the bottle up again. Come on, you know me better than that. I thought I did, she said quietly as he stopped a waitress to ask for another beer. You know, I warned you about that one. You know, Mel, you're not exactly helping here. The waitress set another bottle in front of him, and after paying for it, he downed about half of it without coming up for air. Melody's face sank further into confusion. We could talk about it, you know. Video games aren't my only specialty. Talk? There's nothing to talk about. Besides, I'd rather dance, he said, standing and trying not to wobble. She hesitated another second and finally shook her head and stood. Hello, Mrs. Knight, Eve said into the phone shakily. I was wondering if A.J. might happen to be there. No, I'm sorry. A.J. left a couple of hours ago with Melody and some of her friends. They were going out partying or clubbing or whatever they call it nowadays. Oh, Eve said as the air in her lungs vanished. I could give him a message if you want. She wanted to, more than living to the next moment she wanted to. However, it was abundantly clear that he was fine, and he had her number, and he had chosen not to call for a whole week. No, that's okay, thanks. When she hung up the phone, Eve folded herself into the chair as anger and hurt flooded over her. She wanted to tell herself it was okay, that he'd just forgotten. But how could that be when every single waking and even many non-waking moments she was thinking about no one other than him? How could he just forget about her? You always have a choice, his voice floated over her. He had a choice, and it was obvious that he had made that choice. Why? She couldn't find an answer to that question, but denying it made sense to nothing other than her heart. As the thoughts streamed through her, she curled up tighter in the chair and sank into the misery. I'm fine, A.J. said, swaying dangerously when they exited the club at just after two. Why, you think I'm wasted or something? I'm doing more than thinking it, Melody said, practically carrying him across the parking lot. Her friends had gone home hours before, but A.J. had insisted that they stay for just one more which turned into seven or eight more. That understanding was no longer in his memory. Neither was anything else. Here, give me your keys, Melody said, holding out her hand. My keys? he asked incredulously. He held them just out of her reach. My keys, my car, my drive. I don't think so. She tried to grab them, but that move threatened to land both of them on the asphalt. Why not? You don't think I can drive, he asked teasingly. And then something far down reached up and grabbed him. What, you don't trust me? Not in this shape, I don't, Melody said. That hurts, Mel, it really does. Yeah, well, tough, give me your keys. She lunged after them again, falling into him in the process. He caught her under one arm. You know, if I didn't know better... I think you wanted more than my keys, he said, turning sad, drunk puppy dog eyes on her. Hardly. Her body caught his as he stumbled into her. Why not? It wouldn't be the first pass you made at me. She fought to keep him upright as they crossed between two cars. I was four, she said irritably, and it was a mistake even then. Besides, right now, you're not exactly a catch. Her hand grabbed him and stayed his movement as a car passed by in front of them. Now, give me your keys before you get us both killed. What, you don't like me now? Is that it? He asked, and anger flashed to the surface. If I didn't like you, I would let you drive, she said as they reached his car. Now give me those keys. 
He staggered to the driver's door as Melody managed to slip between him and it. For a moment, words went through his head with no real destination. Then, through the slow blink of his eyes, he looked at the girl standing in front of him. Images slashed over images so that he couldn't be sure who she was. Please don't be mad at me, he said softly as he reached up and ran a hand over her bleach-blonde locks. I didn't mean for it to be like this. Clumsily, he leaned forward, but she was far too fast for him as she moved out of the way. Man, she really did a number on you. Who? he asked as the thread of conversation evaporated from in front of him. Your model perfect girlfriend, Melody said, and in the brief moment that he forgot about the keys, she grabbed them. Come on, let's get you home before those beers start really taking effect. It was at least her 700th game of solitaire, that Eve was no longer counting them. He was out with Melody. That wasn't terribly bad. It was the two friends they were with that bothered her. Maybe Melody fixed him up again, and he couldn't tell her no. But that didn't explain Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. She snapped another card out of the deck. She wanted to be mad, to be furious, to hate him forever and go on with her life. The only problem was, she couldn't do that. He now had a place inside her, a place she couldn't just deny no matter how much she wanted to. Then again, what more did she expect? She knew from the beginning that he wasn't exactly stable jumping from job to job, and what was that whole L.A. thing anyway? Who just picks up and moves out there for no good reason? Another card snapped out of her hand and hit the table. Her finger tapped up and down on the table like a bored woodpecker as her mind searched for a place to play. He was jerking her around, that's what he was doing, playing with her, toying with her. Sure, she hadn't wanted more than a friend to begin with, but that was no longer the case. Humiliation ran over her when she thought about her actions in the mountains. He probably thought it was hilarious how she had practically thrown herself at him. Then there was Sunday. Ugh, she couldn't even think about that. How could she have let herself fall for someone so obviously not ready for commitment, so obviously immature as A.J. Knight? He was a kid. He always would be and she would be better off if she just found a way to put him out of her head and her heart for good. From the moment A.J. opened his eyes to the sunshine the next morning, the world was set on permanent spin cycle. Ugh, he moaned, draping an arm over his stinging eyes. With the other hand, he managed to take hold of the curtain and pull it across the window. However, his hand continued long past the stopping point and when it landed, the lamp didn't quite move out of the way quickly enough. The resulting crash echoed through his head like a gong. Ugh! Two tons of bricks couldn't have felt heavier as he rolled to one side and pulled himself up off the bed. When he looked down, he realized he was still in the same clothes from the night before, only now they smelled much worse than he remembered them. Flashes of pictures jumped through his mind in no real pattern as he swayed forward on the bed. The bar. He remembered that part. And dancing. Vaguely, he remembered that. And then there was something about Melody that he couldn't quite catch on to. Pushing that and everything else away, he stood and made his way across the hall into the bathroom. His mouth felt like someone had stuffed it full of cotton. If it was possible, he looked even worse than he felt, he thought when he glanced into the mirror. He fought with his eyelids to keep them open, although he wasn't really sure why that was such a good idea. It would be so much better to simply let them have their way and go closed permanently. Knowing that he couldn't go downstairs in this shape, he turned on the shower. But before he could take even a stitch of clothes off, his hand found the wall as the spinning recommenced. Slowly, carefully, he slid down the wall and laid his head on his knees. Hollow tears slid from his burning eyes, and he couldn't get enough energy up to even care why. All he wanted to do was to sit right there and hurt forever. This has been White Knight, Book Two, The Courage Series, written by Stacey Stallings, narrated by Becky Dowdy. Copyright 2012, 
by Stacey Stallings. Production copyright 2014 by Stacey Stallings. Never miss a second of the story. Like and subscribe to the Stacey Stallings YouTube channel today.